Everybody? Well, thank you for, for joining me uh, for this talk this morning. Uh, I'm going to, to speak for the next 35 minutes about uh, a language which has been developed by uh, the diverse team in Ren one University. And more especially, uh, Fabien, which, is, which was supposed to be here and present the talk with me this morning, uh, his flight got cancelled. So I'm going to do everything by myself, but no worries, you prepared videos and stuff, so <laughs> you should get what you came for. So my name is Cedric Boone, I'm CTO at OBO, and uh, Fabien is an engineer in the, in the lab in, in Rennes. So what is this about? It's about executable DSL. Um, in the, at the university, so they, they give courses uh, on master degrees and and uh, they use the Eclipse modeling technologies and Eco tools, Axion, and all this stuff. And uh, it's, these tools are pretty, are pretty easy to, to start with. And then if you want to add some execution capability into your DSL, then there is a big step uh, to, to reach. And uh, that's part of the motivation to develop another alternative. So what do we mean uh, by an executable domain-specific language? Well, so something which has an interpreter, which, uh, or maybe as a compiler, so that you can execute it on, on the machine. And it's useful for model transformation and static analysis and all kind of operations. So that's very interesting, especially for labs and uh, for research. But as I said, there is this gap which made it harder. Introducing AIL. AIL um, is an action language for EMF. So basically the idea is that you extend ECO and you annotate ECO with uh, runtime data, which means attributes or reference which are only making sense in the context of an execution and or implementing E operations. So this is an E-class, uh, a simple E-class, and using A, you can just say, hey, here is a new attribute in this E-class which only makes sense during the execution. And here is the implementation of the, uh, of the E operation greeting. Of course, you know, I guess, you know this A. Uh, if you've been around in the streets of Toulouse yesterday night, I'm pretty sure you met, you met it. Uh, it's, uh, well, it's, really an inspiration for the name of this DSL. That's, that, that's a big part of it. So. Now, more, more seriously, uh, so it's an action language for EMF, which is integrated into e tools. We'll see that in the demo. And uh, you can define behavior of our meta model. And it's as support for open class, uh, so, which means you, you can take an, an E-class and just add behavior to it, even if you did not define the E-class yourself. And what is interesting is that it's providing uh, a syntax which is, uh, I would say, very close to OCL, um, except you have nice stuff, nicer stuff, I would say, uh, which are, for instance, uh, type inference in, in the if uh, branch and conditionals which is just one example. And I'll see, we'll see later why, uh, how it came to be. So the first step is designing your eCore meta model. And that part is easy. eCore tools provide you a nice tooling to do that. And you have, of course, Xcore otherwise, if you want to do it textually. And uh, yeah, so this is an eCore model for uh, a finite state machine eCore model. So a pretty, pretty simple one with a state machine, which has states, transitions, and uh, initial or terminal states. So this is a very basic one, but there is nothing related to execution here. It's just uh, the declaration of a, a state machine. So if you have this equal model, you then generate the code. And if you want to provide behavior, you will either uh, modify the generated code or configure the code generation to add more uh, at the body of the operations. Uh, either use the delegation mechanism, which is in EMF, so that you can dynamically say, hey, this e operation, I'm going to implement it this way and provide this behavior, or use the switch, which is generated by eCore, by EMF, 
and add and visit the model and add your behavior. Uh, or use other tools, um, other model transformations and stuff like that. So these are the, the common techniques used to bring execution and uh, in, a, in a domain specific language. And uh, well, to do all of these stuff, you have to understand the whole compilation chain. And uh, this is pretty hard for, uh, well, it's pretty complex. Uh, you have this notion of a plugin of OSGI and dependencies and you have versions and constraints and you then you well all this stuff is just lots of accidental complexity if you just want to run your DSL and see how it goes so you can't really design your e-core and the test implementation and test the implementation in parallel and that you have to, to, to run another eclipse so you do something you change the behavior you run another eclipse you try it and when you develop your DSL and you make it executable, you do that like 20 times a day. So this is very painful, I would say. And it, this means that you will not get to the optimal solution because just you will not be able to iterate fast enough. So when we built Eclipse Sirius, that was one of the main motivation be behind Sirius. Uh, Sirius allows you to define graphical modeler very, very easily iterating directly in your workspace, you see the result, you, should, you change something in the definition, you see the result directly. And that was something that we wanted to do for the execution. So, so with A, it's just interpreted. So you just run it. Uh, you don't need all these uh, class paths and completion and all this stuff uh, to be okay. It's just, uh, you have the code, we can run it directly. There's no need to deploy it. So let's move to a very small demo. Sorry guys, the room is small, but... <laughs> but you will come anyway. <laughs> okay. Ah. Can you see it? Mostly? Well, I'm going, I'm going to transcript. So if we have a project with an e-core and a, a diagram. So this is a simple e-class, which is called hello world with an e-operation, which is greeting. Then in e-core tools, you can enable a behavior uh, viewpoint. So you say, hey, I designed my domain model, my e-core model, and I want to add behavior. So you enable the viewpoint, and then you have a new layer that you can activate which brings you new tools and new way to, to edit the echo. It also created one file, which is a .dsl file. I'll come back to this one later. And uh, another file, which is uh, the ale file, which will actually contain the textual definition of the behavior. So if we move there and we go back to echo tools, and uh, we can just say, hey, uh, right click and uh, edit behavior, and it's going to add the corresponding override definition into the A file. And in this file, then we can just write the behavior. And the behavior in the case of Hello World is pretty simple. We just say, hello, and use the name of the instance of Hello World. As you see, there is a name attribute. And we'll just log that. Okay? So, we also have a small annotation to the, say, hey, this method is an entry point, which is suitable for just starting an execution. And now we are done. To start the execution, we need an instance. This is a dynamic instance with the name EclipseCon. And so now we can just right click and say, hey, let's run it, picking the dynamic instance, the model, and see, Hello, EclipseCon. So that's the very basic uh, way you use A right now. But it's, as I said, uh, already integrated in any in core tools. <coughs> so getting back to A, there's two things in A. The first one is open class. So the idea is all the behavior is defined in a specific file, which is outside of the e -core. And that's interesting because then you can define different behaviors and 
maybe switch those. Uh, that there might be different semantic for this, the finite state machine here. Um, you could just pick one depending on your use case. This is also interesting because then if, for instance, you use, I don't know, the UML implementation of Eclipse, you can't really change this echo. And that means that you can add a behavior on this existing echo model without modifying it. It's also good that the semantic and uh, the static data is uh, just kept separated. So now we move to another, another demo uh, running the FSM and adding a behavior, uh, a complete behavior for running uh, a finite state machine. So we are back to project. Uh, and this is a class diagram, which is made with equal tools. So this is the finite state machine diagram I just I showed before. <coughs> Here again, we're going to uh, enable the behavior viewpoint so that we can add new uh, runtime data and uh, we can add uh, the behavior in AIL. So see, there's, there's these new tools in the palette. So we can define runtime class, operation, attribute references. These are all things which you are going to define in the diagram, but which will actually be stored in the L file. Is that clear? It's this idea of opening the class and adding uh, stuff to it. So here's an empty L file. And going back to this, the DSL file is a very uh, simple entry point which states, hey, I'm going to use this uh, equal, basically, uh, this, this instance with this semantic. So it's just binding the L file and the semantic with a given instance. Well, it's just, just to be able to start it actually and switch if you want. So it's doing the binding. That's really, I would say, a technical concern. So what do we have now? That's a problem with the videos. <laughs> you can't really manage the reason. So we are doing and adding, uh, I guess, an attribute, a runtime attribute. Yep. And so adding the attribute in the class, uh, add the corresponding element in the xtext file and we are going to add the current event attribute on the state machine so the behavior of the state machine is going to be there has be there are events for each event it can enable a new transition depending on the uh, previous state so of course we need um, another runtime data which is the current state uh, of the state machine and this data is actually uh, will actually be maintained by the runtime and uh, during execution. And now we define the is activated operation, which is defined in the eco model. We just say, hey, this is the behavior. And the behavior is we check that uh, the event is um, the current event of the transition is the one of the state machine. And that the incoming reference on the given transition is the current state. So in another way, where we check that the transition, which could be activated, is uh, possible from the current state, and that we received the right event. So here, it's not, so there is validation on all this stuff. Uh, it's not. Of course, there's a problem because fsm.event is not even existing. So that's current event. That's the attribute, the runtime attribute we define up on, in the file. <coughs> um, I think I'm way too far in the demo. So yeah, we just opened stuff, adding some content, and we'll get back to the actual behavior of the state machine. So. Um, Ale is actually reusing AQL. AQL is a language we built as part of Sirius, which is, I would say, an OCL-like, but 
uh, we that we tweaked a bit so that it's more efficient and more interesting in the context of SERS. So this is a language which is part of Eclipse Axilio, which has been designed so that it would be embedded in many other contexts. It only depends on Java and one plugin of EMF and Anchor. So the idea behind uh, AQL is mostly that we can interpret and we make sure that we interpret as fast as possible. And there is no such thing as a validation, for instance, during interpretation. But on the other hand, the validation can be launched before and is pretty strong and you're using type inference and stuff like that. So this is the trade-off we made. We made sure that the language is going to run and run as fast as possible at runtime, not checking much. And on the other hand, at validation time when you're editing your or design file or something like that, then you get pretty good and strong validation. So, but actually it's only expressions. It's just uh, OCL-like expression. You know, you have expressions like that, lambda, and uh, you can easily add your no, new behavior in AQL by just defining a Java class, which is going to extend the language with new behavior and new operations. So AQL is, does not need any kind of code generation. So it's an expression language. There is no side effect. And actually, AIL is there to provide this side effect, adding assignment, control flow, and support for multiple inheritance, because ECO supports multiple inheritance, runtime data, and uh, type inference. And I get back to the 10-minute demo that I actually started. Uh, so we've seen before that we define the behavior of the is activated um, uh, method, and now we are defining the execute method of the uh, of a state, which is basically just going to log something in the console, like hey, I'm executing state x or state y. And now we are going to just implement a method on the state machine to handle new event. Okay, so when there is a new event, we're going to keep this event in the state of the state machine, like the current event variable. And then uh, we're going to, well, proceed to the next uh, transition and to move to the next state. You see the activated transition. So here you can see it's, it's plain OCL, I would say. Uh, we can just use self, which is the current context, the transitions, select the first which is activated and then move to the outgoing reference and this is a new state. So with this uh, we are pretty much done with defining the semantic of the state machine. We just need to start the program and to do so we are adding a main method with just hard coded events and, uh, and we'll start it that way. So the events are a sequence of string. Here again, it's a pure and simple OCL. So it's a sequence of I don't know, event one, event two, and so on. Once we have this sequence of events, we just have to say, hey, let's find the initial state and get started with that. So we pick the current the states of the state machine. We filter by the type to get the first initial state. This is well. This is the design of the core model. It's kind of weird. And uh, we start with that, and then let's just uh, execute it. I'm sorry. That's very small for for you. I guess the text. So we execute the state and then we go through the event and put the event into the state machine and see how it goes. Okay. So with all that, we are able to now start a new execution. We did not generate any code. We can also come back to this and change the behavior and try something else. So the tooling 
uh, is actually done with Xtext, so it's it's all uh, very standard and what you would expect. And yeah, just adding a, a few more lo logs to see what's going on. So one missing part right now is the ability to run it step by step. And uh, of course that would be the next addition to this. I really want that. But everything is designed in a way that it, it would be easy because we know the current states and uh, we know all these runtime data are something we want, which we want to expose in the debug view, for instance. Okay, let's start it. So we have a dynamic instance there. Here again, no code generation, just echo. And with an initial state and a number of transitions and other states. Oh no, we only have one state and three transitions. And we are going to run it. And here it is. Lots of texts in the console. <laughs> so I hope this gives you a pretty good idea of what can be done with uh, with A. Uh, I'm going to now move back to what are the what are the next steps. Um, so again, I'm doing the presentation alone, but it's not uh, my work. Uh, my own, only only me working on this. It's mostly the divers team, uh, but. Just in 10 minutes video, you've seen that we've been able to create finite state mesh in DSL and it with execution from scratch. And uh, <coughs> without having any hurdle in compiling and generating and stuff like that. Uh, you can find more information on, on, on this website. And uh, uh, of course, we already developed as part of the Serious Lab support for debugging DSLs and integrating those DSLs into Eclipse. And uh, well, one of the next step is, uh, as I said, to have this ability to step uh, and have the execution step by step. So the perspectives are the diverse team is uh, planning to contribute this to the Core Tools project. Right now it's on, on GitHub. So they're preparing the code to contribute this to, to the Core Tools. Hopefully, uh, if everything goes well in the next release, so next June, uh, this could be part of Ecore Tools and so very easy to use and uh, very available. And uh, of course, it's uh, not near the state of uh, something completely industrial and tested and stuff like that. So that would definitely need to happen in the meantime. And uh, that's why if you have any feedback and you try it, then, then we are very glad to get your feedback and see if we can move forward from it. Uh, there's also another experiment on this, which is about generating Java code. So, of course, this is a bit uh, going back from what I said before, which is, well, it's nice because we don't even have to generate code. Yeah, but in the end, uh, it, you know, it's scientific work and it's also useful to just validate and see where it goes compared to the generated Java code regarding performances and use. And this is one of the main ideas that uh, we might see how much of a gap in between interpreted, interpreting the code with AQL and stuff and the generated Java code and see what kind of uh, trade-off you're making. If it's like, yeah, you're okay with being three or four times slower or if it's more uh, several orders of magnitude slower. But we'll see. Uh, thank you for your attention. I'm done with the presentation. Do not forget to uh, evaluate the session. It's, this is very useful for the program committee for selecting the talks for the next events and this is also very useful for the speaker uh, to get your feedback. So I take good feedbacks and, and bad feedbacks. So it's really all right. If you just uh, give me bad feedbacks, please add just a note to so that I can improve. Um, is there any question by Shant? As far as I understood, the .dsl file, you should not touch it, right? But modify it manually or... 
No, you, you, you don't really change it except if you want to switch uh, an execution semantic at okay. some point. If you want to say, hey, I, I have another A file which defines a slightly different semantic for the okay. finite state machine, and you change this in this file. So this is only to yeah have this capability of changing. This could also be part of the of the execution uh, launch configuration. Definitely. Yes. Is there a kind of uh, execution uh, twice uh, file generation uh, which is uh, coming in the near future? Or? Well, currently it's not implemented, but yeah, it's it's in the pipe. Um, just to give uh, you. Uh, a little uh, bit of a insight into so into this work. This work happened pretty much at the end of the GMark NR project, and uh, in the GMark project, there's a lot of work which has been done to uh, keep track of all the states of the model, and especially this runtime data, and being able to just move in history to the model and even go back and go forward and stuff like that, and that would definitely be possible and, and interesting to reuse this work in this context but it's not it's not done yet and uh, i think the next very next step right now are more to make sure that what is there works in all situations and gets into eclipse but uh yeah i there will be other work from the diverse team i, I have no doubt about that yes does the behavior work for enum or enumerations um, that's a good question, and I should check. There is no reason it will not work because the AQL works perfectly with enumerations. So uh, you can create an if and, uh, and just use it in the enumeration. So we, I did not actually try it, but uh, it should be no problem. Oh, you mean adding an operation on a new animation? Yeah. Okay, well, then, then <laughs> you can't. You can use an, an existing enumeration in your expressions. This should be no problem. But no, you can't add uh, a method. But you can, so you can define, override the behavior of an existing operation, but you can also define a new operation in the L file. So you could say, hey, my state machine has a new operation, which takes the enumeration as a parameter, and you're, and you're good to go. One last question? Yes. Yep. Is there already a meaning to deploy the behavior you can have in code? Yes, you, you can actually deploy it. Yes, as is, you don't need to generate Java code. You just deploy it and just in the action, if you want to start with an action or something like that, you just load the AIL file, which is part of your plugin and, so and stuff. Bench, uh, like you, like you package on the yeah, you can, you can package already, yes. Um, yep. What are the available types uh, that you have when you build your code? So the available types are those which are part of eCore. core so all the data types which are in ECO are there and are supported by the AQL syntax. Uh, which is not done yet is the ability to extend your AIL file with uh, Java services, which could add more, more uh, functions into your language and which could be pretty easy because AQL is designed in a way that it's very easy to do that. And if you do that, then you would also be able to use uh, your own data types. So AQL supports the fact that if you use your own data types and you use the string syntax and we are going to instantiate it and use it uh, using the create from <laughs> string method of the package. So you could either also define your own data type in the echo and use it. But then to have a behavior for this data type, like additions, for instance, or subtraction, then you would need to add this uh, Java services just like uh, in series. And this has not been done as far as I know. Thank you. And uh, I'm available for questions uh, right after the talk. Thank you very much.